Hey everyone, this is Thais from Cockney G. Today I'll be talking about connecting Cockney G to UiPath in order to create a bot that can generate an invoice for us. And yeah, it's uh, going to be a, a three-step process essentially. We'll have Cockney G that uh, that talks to the user, right? So the or actually the user talks to Cockney G, and Cockney G then uses natural language understanding and its process orchestration in order to come up with a uh, a sensible dialogue. And then Cockney G will uh, will ask the user a number of questions. So it needs a contact uh, a contact name. So the contact that the, uh, the 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 invoice should be generated for. It also needs to know, um, you know, basically whether that's a whether that's a valid contact and maybe some more information related to that context. So that's what we're going to use HubSpot for because we have contact information in HubSpot a CRM uh, system. And then finally, it needs to ask uh, what the service is for, and then it combines all of the information. So Cockney G combines all of the information and sends it to UiPath, which then generates the invoice uh, in an Excel sheet. So that's the that's the bot in, uh, or that's it's not just the bot; it's the process in um, in a, in a nutshell. So let's switch over to Cockney G. You see that I just created a, a brand new UiPath invoice demo project. Um, and I already went ahead and I created some some connections so that that uh, goes a bit uh, quicker. I am the sole project member here, and you see that there's not a lot of conversations taking place, actually none whatsoever. So let's change that. Let's uh, come up with something um, something cool. And we start by clicking on build and then flows. And you can see that I already created a basic flow about three minutes ago. This flow is completely empty except for the fact that it does already have some natural language understanding attached to it. So if I go to NLU, this is the natural, natural language understanding parts, a uh, part of a, of a Cognitive agent, and this is where we define the things that a user could, um, could express and the intent that they might have. So you can see that I created a create invoice intent with some example, with some training data, right? And I created a open invoice where I ask um, if there's any outstanding payments, right? So this is just providing some training data. You can see that Cognigy scored the model itself. Some sentences are pretty good. Overall, I did a pretty good job, I guess, but this accounts payable sentence has a relatively low score. So this is machine learning, right? This is tra training data that helps the natural language understanding uh, model to um, um, well, to, to come up with with a match. So, if the idea is that if we enter something similar to this, that uh, the bot will be able to understand it and then then use this, um, um, well, use the intent that it found. The way we use it is by going to the chart. This is where we bring everything together. So, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to um, add a a node here, some output, and the output is going to be the bot introducing itself. So, we're going to say hi. Uh, I am the um, I'm the invoice bot, right? Invoice bot. I can help you create an invoice. That's what it's going to say. So we can save this, and let me show you the interaction panel here to the right. If I now say something, if I now say hi, then the bot will output, "Hey, I'm the invoice bot. I can help you create an invoice." That's it. That's the only thing I can say. I can enter something else and it will repeat the same thing because there's no logic here. So let's change that. We basically want this to be said only once at the start of the conversation. So we have a logic node for that called the once node. And that basically allows us to configure this message only uh, for the first time we start the bot. And then afterwards, this is where we want to um, start a process, but actually we want to look up what the user actually m m m meant, right? So we want to add a lookup node. And this is literally doing what it says. It's looking up the intent the user has. So what does the user want to do? It can either, the user, you know, can either want to create an invoice or uh, ask for any open payments. And if neither of these two cases have been found, it will, you know, resort to the default case here, in which case we can uh, basically say, so we can add a new say node, um, that we did not understand what the user want, right? Sorry, um, sorry, I did not get that. So that's that's um, that's what happens in the default one. So the create invoice, that's what it's about, right? This is where we um, where we should basically ask the user a question. But before that, let's just copy this say note here, and then we copy it under the open invoice as well. We change the text so we say. 
this point we would um, uh, start uh, create invoice process like so and then here when this intent is triggered we want to say um, check for open payments like so Let's save this the reason I am adding these uh, say notes here is because we can now go ahead and basically test if the machine learning is working um, so I will go to uh, settings and then expert mode and I'll turn it on and then go back to chat what it basically does if we now say hi then it will you know use the once node and on the first time will output this if I now say something like blah 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 then it will not find an intent right it says sorry I didn't get that because we um, configure this for the default output if it does if it does a lookup for intents and it does not find an intent it will go to the default one and say sorry I did not get that now if we say um, I don't know, create a, a new uh, invoice um, invoice please right you see that we now have a 75% match with create the create invoice intent and it says start create invoice process this is the machine learning in action, right? This is not one of the example sentences that we provided the system with. Um, so it it's basically, or well, not really guessing, it's finding a statistical correlation between this sentence and the training data, right? That's how, how machine learning essentially works. So this allows us to build very uh, robust and you could argue intelligent bots because you know we, we don't we don't have to pre-train every input sentence, of course. And in the same way, I can ask something else. I could say, uh, do I uh, have any uh, open invoices? Something like this. Let's see. Yeah, and it got that this is, um, you know, this has to do with the open invoice intent. You can see that both sentences have the word invoice. So this is not, um, this is not keyword based. This takes into account the meaning of the full sentence, right? And that's what we use the natural language understanding for in the training data that we configured. All right. So let's uh, make this a bit more exciting we will focus on the create invoice process here because that's what we want to do the first thing that we want to do is we move the say note and we want to ask a question we want to ask the user want to ask the user uh, for some text some some any any open text right it's not a yes no question or we're not asking for an email or our money that would be cool I'm not about asking for money we will ask for open text and the question that we will ask the user is um, what is the name um, of your contact right so what is the name of the contact and we will um, we will store this under uh, the context so we will just call this um, name although we don't actually need to do this because this is a question and Cock and G will automatically remember um, that it just asked the question and we can reuse this information so that's the first question let me change the label though because that's a bit clearer if I go to styling here and instead of question I can say ask for contact like so and now the flow becomes a bit clearer because you can see we already have you know a growing flow so the next thing that we want to do is we want to uh, look up the contact information and then we want to basically say something like okay uh, I found something um, for this contact if it found something and we already saw in the slides at the start that it needs to check for a contact in another system. In this case, we have a very nice pre-built extension for HubSpot with a node called Find Contact. So we can use HubSpot from directly, you know, di directly within the Cognitive Flow, as we can also do with UiPad, and we'll do that in just a bit. So HubSpot needs an API key that I prepared, so it's a connection, and then it needs to query, it needs to search for something. What does it need to search for? Well, the answer to the question, who the contact is. So we can simply say, you know, last question, last question result, dynamic token, this is dynamic information. And once that has been found, dear HubSpot or dear Cognigy, please store this information under the context, under the label HubSpot. That's what we're saying here, the storage option. Use the dynamic answer, get the information, find the contact and store it under the context, under the label HubSpot. So let's do this and let's, uh, disable this note for now so let's see if this works I'm gonna say hi start the flow I'm gonna say uh, create a new invoice please that triggers the intent the question is triggered what's the name of your contact and that is John Doe so it wakes a couple of seconds you can see now the flow turns green so it, it all went well there's no error messages 
And now we can go under the info panel to the context and we see that there's a HubSpot label with a lot of information available. Right? So this is all the information that is found. That's great. So what we want to do next is we want to um, basically enable this uh, say note where we want to confirm that it's found something. So this is going to be something like, great, I uh, found a contact. So we're going to say a contact for, and what we want to do now is we can, what well, we basically want to use the dynamic information that came from HubSpot, right? So let's save this note and let's have a quick look again um, in the interaction panel and see what it uh, actually stores. We can see it has context, HubSpot, and then a query. This is what the user searched for. So I can I can actually uh, use Cognitive Script to do this. I can say, great, I found a contact for curly brackets. This is the interactive part. This is basically signaling Cognitive that this is interactive. So it's under the context dot HubSpot dot, um, dot query. That's it. Right, so go to the context, look for the label HubSpot, and then get the query property. And that's the value that you, dear bot, need to repeat here. So that's great. This is confirming the contact. And now we want to uh, ask one more question, and we want to uh, basically um, want to basically uh, ask the user what service what service should be added to the invoice. So let's do that. Let's ask another question. This question is also going to be text-based. And what we're going to ask is, what service should I add to the invoice? Question mark. That's great. So we can uh, actually store this to the context right away. We're going to call it um, description. So we want to have a service description. And that's that. Good. So now we have information that we can send to UiPad, right? Just scrolling up a bit. This is our bot. But we need to uh, very specifically tell UiPad like the pieces of information. And, and, you know, we have all the information from HubSpot here, but we cannot send everything over to UiPad. I mean, we could, but that doesn't, you know, make a lot of sense. Instead, we want to send some very specific information over to UiPad. So what I want to do after finding a contact in HubSpot, I want to add some specific information to the context. So I basically want to add some more properties here um, that are more specific um, and not the full list that we have here. So the first thing that I want to add is a first name. And the value for this first name is something that I'm just going to copy over because it's going to be quite long because it comes from this all this information that we got, got from uh, HubSpot. And um, that is basically going to be this snippet. The cool thing here is that if I if I know that I'm going to going to reuse it, I can also create a token for it. So I can basically go ahead and you can see I already did that. I can also say HubSpot first name, and then basically use the dynamic information um, there. So yeah, we can do that. But for now, I just want to have the script here to so you understand how it works, where the information actually comes from, and that is the context where all of the information from HubSpot that we got for John Doe is stored. So we have this for first name. I'm going to do the same thing for last name and company. So I'm going to copy this by pressing Alt and dragging down and doing that again. So now we have three times an add to context. This one, of course, is going to be the last name. And the first name will be last name dot value. And then finally, we're going to have company. And then here, um, company dot value. So now we have all the information in the context explicitly, and now it's time to send it to UiPath. So we're going to use another extension for that that is grouped here on the UiPath, and that's going to be the start job because we want to trigger a UiPath job, trigger a UiPath process. UiPath needs uh, credentials as well, API keys, right? And that's what I did here already. I prepared a connection. It also needs a release key. This is basically pointing to a very specific release of a process on my, um, uh, so in my orchestration, in my uh, UiPad orchestrator cloud. And it also needs a robot ID that references to the robot on my machine, a specific strategy. And this is where the interesting part comes. We have an optional advanced tab where we can actually add the dynamic information that we just collected in the bot. So we can send UiPad some JSON 
and that's what we do here. We have the first name, last name, company, and the description, and we ask all of this information. That that's the reason that I actually put it explicitly in the context to make this a bit easier, like so. So that's pretty much it. We can now send it to UiPath, and well, finally, what we want to uh, do is we want to um, well, we want to say something like, you know, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna generate your invoice. So we want to confirm to the user that something is going to happen, right? Because it can take a couple of seconds. I am now generating your invoice. And maybe we want to do this before actually triggering the UiPath um, bot because this can take a couple of seconds. Good. Let's also have a quick look at what the UiPad bot looks like. You can see we have some dynamic uh, input arguments that we use here. This is basically using the Excel application scope, opening an invoice.xlsx uh, uh, file, and then you see that it, it, it uses the information that we sent from Cockingy. So company is, is a dynamic input argument, as you can see here. It's not hard-coded. And it does the same thing with first name, last name, and description. And then you see that the uh, the actual amount for the service that is writing is hard coded. Then saves the workbook, and yeah, this is then published using the um, uh, orchestrator. Um, uh, and, and then you know it, it's published, and we can we can talk to it using the orchestrator API. That's how I should say it. So that's the way the Cockney um, extension works. Good. Let's try it one more time. I can actually trigger it here from within the. Uh, the uh, panel that we have. So let's try that first. See the whole flow? Zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to trigger the bot. I'm going to say hey this time instead of hi. You know, got to try some variation. Now I'm going to say uh, please generate a new invoice. So it understood that. That's good. What's the name of your contact? So that will be uh, John Doe. And it will now go into HubSpot and try to find a contact. It says great, I found a contact for John Doe. What service? Uh, what service should I uh, should I add? So we say basic service because that's what we want to uh, add. And it says, all right, I'm now generating an invoice, and it will now start the job, which is good. So everything went green, and your iPad's doing something on my uh, other screen. So that's nice. So let's have a look at whether that worked. I'm going to go to the folder here, click on invoice, basic service. John Doe, Acme Inc. Great. So it, it generated a, uh, a basic invoice for us. The time is right. Yeah. So that's um, that's it. That's that's what we um, what we want about to do. So let me switch back to Cockney here real quick and set up an endpoint for it. So we can deploy an endpoint here that is um, well basically any of these channels, right? Because we don't want end users to log on to Cockney, we want them to use a channel that they're already on, right? So let's say that we um, set up a, a basic web chat here. So we call it web chat, and then we point it to the, uh, the main flow, save it. Well, maybe we can uh, change the color a little bit. Maybe we make it a uh, UiPad orange. Not quite sure about the color, you have to forgive me. So. We now have a nice orange, and now we can open the web chat in the browser. And now if we say hi, you see that the same bot will be uh, triggered. And that's uh, that's pretty much it. So lastly, let's hook this bot up to the phone line and give it a call and see if, uh, if that works as well. Hi, I am the invoice bot. I can help you create an invoice. Hey, this is Thais. Could you generate a new invoice for me, please? What is the name of your contact? John Doe. Great. I found a contact for John Doe. What service should I add to the invoice? Basic service. All right. I am now generating your invoice. Have a nice day. Thanks. You too. All right. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. And make sure to go to signup.cockingg.ai if you want to give it a shot yourself. Catch you later. Bye.